Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. We're here at the side of McCollum Hall, which is going to be imploded in less than 30 minutes. Uh, it's 56 degrees. There's a slight 15 mile per hour wind out of the south. Uh, all things considered, it's going to be a good day uh, to watch a little history. Uh, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us, especially for our KU Alumni Association members. I'm David Johnston. Normally, I'm the Vice President of Marketing for the Alumni Association, but today I'm in a, a special role as kind of a special correspondent to our uh, live broadcast of the McCollum Explosion. We've got a treat for you today uh, with lots of good content. And the way this all came about is once we heard the news that uh, McCollum was, was going to be demolished, we started hearing from alumni eager to share their stories, eager to witness history uh, from people like Dave Rowland, who's a member of our alumni board. We also heard from uh, alumni sharing their stories like Mark and Janice Gales, uh, who met in McCollum and have been married for 25 years. We'll be sharing some of their stories, plus interviews with um, KU notables, including folks from KU Design and Construction Management, who will tell us a little bit about the implosion process, folks from University Archives and KU Info, who can tell us more about the history and tradition of McCollum Hall. And these interviews with alumni, students, and former residents uh, are coming right up. But first, we're going to start by telling you a little bit about um, who McCollum was, or maybe more specifically, who the McCollums were. Both of the brothers were amazing people, and um, they were quite poor when they were young. They each had, I think, like um, three jobs that they worked along with uh, going to school. Uh, it was E.V. McCollum and Burton. E.V. was a lamplighter in Lawrence. He also milked cows, I believe, early in the morning, and then he would fall asleep in class. But despite that fact, he um, graduated, I'm not sure with honors, but probably, and became a uh, world-renowned scientist um, with his, in his work with vitamins. When he was in Wisconsin, they were using cows to do research. And he was the first to use mice. The Burton was um, an engineer. I think they, and they both graduated in 1903. They weren't the same age, but the way it turned out, they both graduated in the same year. I moved to Lawrence in 1973 as a student, and I came from Parsons, which is a very small town in southeastern Kansas. And so I remember driving, you know, Highway 59 up to Lawrence, and the first university building I saw was McCollum. Well, the master plan began to, to set up that process master plan for the housing component set up that process of going building to building to building uh, to, to renew that. The real challenge at that point was to take a look at McCollum Hall, which um, when you look at that facility, it's 900 beds, it's a dense, really dense facility, uh, and the majority of the students that we had um, were not real fond of, of that large of a community and, and living in that large of a facility. So we had a, a marketing study done and it basically bore out what we understood that we needed to move away from that model and get back to a more human scale facilities and facilities with the amenities that the students were looking for today. And so the decision was made then to build a replacement facility um, for McCollum Hall. I think alumni membership uh, is not just important, I think it's vital, I think it's crucial. How do you have a university unless you are able to show the connections from the past to the present to the future? I'm a simple business person, so let me put it this way. When you get a degree from an institution, it's as though you bought stock in a company. You want it to do well. And so as an alumna, I feel it's a way for me to stay connected and, as I said, shape the future. I want people to come back with their kids, with their grandkids and say, this is the place that made me and now it's my turn to make this a better place. Nothing is too small to make a difference in KU. I'm Neely Bendapudi and I'm a proud member of the KU Alumni Association. Rock Chalk!
while we're losing McCollum, uh, we have these two new residence halls that have essentially created what we never had on Daisy Hill, which is a quad, uh, a place where, and we're looking at it right now, where, where perhaps um, students will begin feeling like this is the place to hang out when we're not on campus. Well, it was definitely an upgrade just because McCollum itself is such an old building and um, there were a lot of different, um, it's like a lot of changes, especially just like in the furniture, especially in the way the building is set up. Um, we go from communal bathrooms to now we have our very own bathrooms with our own shower, toilet sink. Last year was a lot about savoring McCollum and like making, I guess, a really good last impression, you could say. Um, my group of residents would be my last residence there. It'd be my last year there, my last room that I lived in there. Um, and spending all that time thinking about McCollum, I didn't really focus a lot on what it would be like living here differently, um, but I'm very happily surprised and I think there's a really great community. It definitely looks a lot more complete. It definitely looks like there's a lot of like collaboration within the buildings, you know what I mean? It's not just like a very linear street anymore. Instead, it's like a cluster where, you know, we have people uh, just like the sides of buildings like facing each other and it's a lot easier to access like Hashinger or Lewis, you know what I mean? Um, I think it does represent a lot of what we were trying to go for as far as community and just like accessibility. I love all the study rooms we have here. I usually just use the ones on my floor. I, I live on first floor of Oswald, um, but I love the study rooms here. I did look forward to coming to live here in Oswald and Cell since I knew they were new. They're really nice. Like I know I appreciate them after visiting friends in Oliver, seeing how they have it. So I appreciate what I have here, but I'll associate more with learning and really growing up. Maybe a sad time for some people that lived in there that have really good memories of McCollum Hall, but I think it's going to be a great new start, especially after the parking spots open up and expand. I think it is a big change, and it's definitely a change for the better. I've seen stereotypical passing the football out in the quad on like sunny afternoons, uh, people playing guitar on the steps, you know, I mean, everything you picture in cheesy college movies, it's happening in our quad. I don't think we've blown up a building on campus before. I think perhaps we've taken down buildings, but as far as I know, we haven't imploded one. And so that's crazy exciting. Um, I mean, they're, they're, it, perhaps it's sad to see it go. Uh, it, it has a wonderful history, as do many of <clears throat> the residence halls on campus. Um, but Daisy Hill is, is as strong as ever, and uh, it's, it's, it's almost a celebration more than anything else because we have two beautiful new residence halls. Um, again, you know, the, the entire Daisy Hill complex is from the late 50s and the 60s. And the residence halls have been upgraded and, and, and beautified, but not McCollum. The poor thing was too big. And so instead, we've, we've determined that not only will we create two new residence halls, but we're going to change the footprint of Daisy Hill so that it becomes more of a community for our first year students. From adversity, we rose. We stood for freedom, for perseverance, for survival, growth, fortitude, ambition, grit. For our name, Jayhawk. We make champions and champion those whose achievements promise a better tomorrow. Because at KU, we invent games and go for the gold. We make shots that count. We dig for answers and find breakthroughs. We set the pace. We innovate. We find ways to shoot for the stars. We remain steadfast, strong, solid, uncompromising. Because this is our story, our past, our present, our future. And when our chant rises, haunting and hallowed, 
Jayhawks are telling the world what's near. Victory. The change that was made several years ago was let's make one place where not only we can combine resources and make a fantastic single dining facility, but we can encourage students to leave their one hall and join other students and, and give them more of an opportunity to build community. So now what we've done is we've taken that to the next level and we've got two residence halls that have a, a beautiful study space in between them. Not that the other halls don't have something along those lines, but this Daisy Hill Commons is fantastic and it encourages students from other halls to come here to study, much like Mrs. E's encourages students to come to another hall to eat. One of the things we've changed with the new residence halls, and, and frankly, I think it will, it will be solidified by saying a fond farewell to McCollum, is that we now have more of a, a circle of residence halls than a long line. With Templin to the north and McCollum to the south, you really had this, um, it, it, it was, it was uh, I can't think of the word I want to use, but okay, it was a line of residence halls. With what in, in between them? A street. So if you wanted to walk back and forth, first of all, you had to make sure that you weren't getting hit, and it wasn't as inviting. It wasn't, it, the footprint did not say, we desperately want you guys to um, build community between halls. And now uh, it's the opposite. We've got green space, we've got tiered seating, outdoor seating areas. We have a grocery store, how cool is that? And all of these things are, are towards the purpose of building community for our first year students. I've enjoyed this semester teaching a UNIV 101 course. Uh, which is set up to assist in the transition from uh, from basically you know high school graduate to first year college student and my class has been a learning community focused and so only students from one of the new residence halls can be in the community I've got I've got 16 students that all live in Oswald Hall and so we've talked a lot about you're here on the 150th anniversary of the university. You are the first people to live in this cool new residence hall. There are a lot of things to celebrate um, up on Daisy Hill this year. And oh, by the way, we're doing something we've never done before. We're gonna, we're gonna implode a building. It's interesting to think that Daisy Hill has been a tradition for first year students only in the last few decades. There are traditions that we hold dear at KU that we feel like must be 100 years old. We've been doing them since there were only two buildings on campus, right? Since people were bringing their kids to college in horse-drawn carriages or something. Well, uh, we say at Allen Fieldhouse that you have to beware of the fog and uh, ev everybody. M many people know that that refers to Fog Allen. Uh, the father of basketball coaching. That's actually only been a phrase since the 80s. And um, <clears throat> although you have to have been here a long time to know that story, some of us have been. The Beware the Fog banner was something that was created in a residence hall. As I understand it, it was in McCollum that a group of students said, we need a sign, we need it to be something more than just on a cardboard box or on poster paper. Uh, let's do this for real and let's sew shower curtains together. Enough of them so that this thing is, gosh, is it 20 feet long? It's, it's huge. And um, all ye who enter, beware the fog. It was uh, February of 1988 and um, we were just creating a significant rivalry with Duke University. Two years before, they had taken us out of the Final Four. Uh, they were the bad guys, 
and they were actually coming to Allen Fieldhouse. So it was a big game, and this group of students chose to create this massive banner, and if I'm not mistaken, they actually worked with athletics to help get it placed up in the rafters behind the student section, and at, and at one point during the game, uh, it was unfurled, and, and simply because of its message and its size, I think everybody loved it. When I came here, I had the impression that uh, uh, we had a very, very, very strong alumni base that was active. And uh, certainly since I've been here, I've found that to be true. We have something that, that stands out and makes us different that I think every alumni definitely relates to. And, you know, you walk through an airport and somebody says rock chalk, you know that Jayhawk's the thing that comes out of your mouth. I, I want to be a part of everything that goes on at Kansas. I want to be a part of, of the Williams Fund. I want to be a part of the Alumni Association. I, I want to be a part of, of student recruitment. The thing that I think is so different about this place than any other school I've been at is I've had a chance through, through, through the time that I've been here to ask kids a lot of times what your experience was like at Kansas. And I've never had one person ever say anything less than it was the best experience of their life. And I've had two children go through it too and they, they, they feel the exact same way. In anything, there's strength in numbers. With the Alumni Association, it's an organization that wants to cater to everybody that cares about Kansas that's gone to school here. And so uh, I think it's vital that, that, that we take pride in, in trying to create as much energy as we possibly can. And, and, and with, with, with numbers comes energy. As soon as you get out of school, I think one of the first things I would do would be I'd, I'd join the Alumni Association. Now you're, you're in. Now, now, now you're a part of something that's bigger than yourself. And the longer that goes on, the more pride you'll have of being part of something like that. I would want to do it as, a, as, a, as an alum and especially a young alum because I want to be a part of something that I love and take pride in it, and it makes the university stronger. I'm Bill Self, and I'm a proud member of the KU Alumni Association. Some beautiful buildings have come down. Uh, of course, the first one that people think of is Fraser. And uh, when it came down in 65, there, was, there were mass protests. But it was um, a building that could not stand any longer. It wasn't safe. Some of the other buildings, beautiful buildings that have come down were Blake, which was you know, about the same time. And um, Old Snow was also over in that area, it came down. And then another beautiful building was um, Old Robinson Gymnasium, which um, was on the corner of Jayhawk Boulevard and um, Sunflower, right in front of Flint. Now, it was, it was a beautiful building. Um, and then next to it was Hayworth, Old Hayworth. And both of those buildings came down, I think, in 67, and uh, Wesco was built, you know, in those locations. Luckily, Dyke is still here and Spooner is still here. Um, Old Green, Leffincott now, Bailey, Strong, are all still here. When we take the building down, um, it will, the site will be cleaned up by March. We have a contractor lined up already who will come right in behind that and build uh, 300 and some odd uh, parking stalls in a lot on that site and that will be ready for the students for fall of 2016. So in the meantime we've built some parking on uh, west of Iowa. We did a bridge improvement because we knew that that was an issue with students having to cross that bridge and knowing that we had to put the temporary parking over there we decided now's the time to do that bridge improvement and, and put in wider walkways um, on both sides of the bridge and put a concrete barrier between the, where the pedestrians walk and where the vehicles go. So again, trying to create a safer environment for those students that are displaced uh, temporarily until we can get a chance to build that new lot. You know, in that roughly 18 seconds that it'll take for the explosives to go off and the building to drop and, the, and everything stop moving, We'll probably have a cloud of dust and we'll have to deal with. Uh, but then they'll have to bring in some uh, machinery 
to basically uh, finish kind of pulling apart the parts and pieces and loading them up in a truck and hauling that material off, off site. Uh, there'll be probably over uh, 900 truckloads of material uh, that we'll be removing. Uh, it'll go to a crusher and that crusher will create over 12,000 uh, cubic yards of uh, aggregate uh, that will be a brick and concrete and so forth. Um, we've set up a, a route to get them in and out so that it doesn't conflict with the students that we have up here on top of Daisy Hill. So we're moving them down into the Stauffer Place apartment area and out on the 19th Street to Iowa. So we're doing that in a way that it, it's as least obtrusive to their day-to-day -day routine as possible. A fairly large percentage of the material will be reused. Um, a lot of the copper and, and those materials have already been stripped out of the facility, uh, doors, uh, things like that. Uh, the actual brick and concrete block and, and concrete frame that will be ground up into an aggregate will be used as fill material under things like paving and, and that. We're back live at the scene. We've got a good crowd gathering. We've had our five minute warning and we can now see helicopters and planes flying overhead getting ready for the big implosion. Um, thanks again for joining us. We've heard some great stories today. Uh, everything from um, pipes on the ceiling of McCollum Hall, memories of ping pong in the lobby. Um, not to mention uh, the doors in McCollum that were different than all the other halls. Um, in Lewis, Templin, etc., those doors were weighted so they automatically shut. But in McCollum, the doors were allowed to stay open. And a lot of former residents said that that contributed to the sense of community uh, residents felt uh, while living there. It's a bittersweet day as we prepare for changes on Daisy Hill, uh, but we hope you've enjoyed our broadcast. I want to thank Dan Story, Mark Crabtree, Jim Deputy, John Stockham, and Debbie Joe Hanning for helping put this production together. Um, and for the KU Alumni Association, I'm David Johnston. I'm going to step away in just a minute so we can actually take a moment to say farewell, McCollum.
Thank you.